Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on today's podcast, I got to tell you, Scott Todd, I haven't been this excited about a guest and their offering in a long, long time. I mean, this is something that's got my brain a little bit scrambled and is going to solve a lot of problems. It's, you know what the word is, Scott? Disruptive. It's disruptive. But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him, you love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, are you ready for this? Uh, look, you know, I, I've given the website a once over. Uh, let's, let's, let's break it down. Let's go look at it. All right. Our guest today is Matthew Sullivan, founder, president, and CEO, possibly a genius of quantumre.com. <laughs> Matthew is the founder and full-time CEO and director, director of Quantum One and has held this position since the company's incorporation in December 2017. Before that, he was the founder and president of CrowdVenture LLC, a real estate crowdfunding company. We're going to get back to that. He's also been the director of Secured Real Estate Income Strategies, a real estate fund. Since June 2016, has been a co-founder and director of Secured Real Estate Income Fund 1 LLC since May 2015. He's also the owner and president of Carbon Retirement LLC and has held this position since November 2014. In the late 90s, he spent a number of years working alongside, you know him, Richard Branson. Yeah, that guy and his corporate finance team and was involved in a number of high profile Virgin projects, including the Virgin, the Virgin, Virgin Global Challenger, the first attempt to fly around the world in a hot air balloon. He's been a lot involved in a lot of the other companies. Matthew Sullivan, you're a big deal. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I think I must have sent you someone else's bio there, actually. It doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> So Matthew, there's a lot to discuss here, but before we talk about you, Scott and I are just curious, what is quantum RE and what problem does it solve? Um, first of all, thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, to answer your question, we solve a major problem for homeowners, and that is we enable them to unlock some of the equity in their homes without taking on more debt. So what that means is we give you a cash lump sum, which you have full use of, and you pay no tax, and there are no monthly payments ever. So Scott, now, I, 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 think I know Scott what you're, I know both what scratch your heads, and we, I know we what like, you're going to say next. We we both are, are scratch your heads. We're like, you know, look, if something seems too good to be true, I'm going to unlock the equity on my house. I'm not going to go to the bank. I'm not going to get a home equity loan. I'm not going to line a credit. I'm not going to be on the hook for more debt. You're just going to give me a lump sum for my house. I don't have to make any interest payments. I don't have to make any principal payments. I don't have to worry about foreclosure, any of that nasty stuff from the bank. What do I, what do I risk by doing this? Let me explain what our programs are. So we are investors, not lenders. We make our money by taking a share of the appreciation of your home when you sell it. So all of our profits and all of the return on our investment is back-ended. It's in a long way into the future. So what we do is we provide you with a cash lump sum, which is us buying into the ability to share in some of the appreciation of your home. We don't own any of your home. It's a, a very similar to an option agreement. And what that agreement says is in exchange for this option payment, when you sell your home, which can be any time up to 30 years from today, when you sell your home, you give us back the amount that we originally invested together with a share of the appreciation. And that means because we're investors and we're not lending you money, there is no interest. And we are effectively equity investors. It's a type of program that is uh, very much in use in commercial real estate, where you have all sorts of different types of funding. You've got junior debt and senior debt, and mezzanine and equity funding and preferred equity. With a residential home, at the moment, the only real option you have is debt. So you don't have any equity options. So even though you may own all of your home outright, 
The only way you can unlock that at the moment is to go back to the bank and borrow money. So what our programs are, they're not loans. It's not debt. It's not something that is debt pretending not to be debt. It's something completely different. And we make our money by taking a share of the amount that your house goes up in value. That's hard. Did well, that answer I, your question? It, it, I, I, okay, so all right, I get, I get that. I'm like, I don't think I would do this. Maybe as an investor, I might do it, but to to have somebody on my my house with me, why would I do it? Like, why would I do that unless I absolutely deadly deathly needed the money today? Like I'm not like I, I don't know. I guess I'm just skeptical. And maybe maybe this is the problem that you have with disruptive technology is that, I mean, do people do this? They do. In fact, um, there are a number of companies. There's about half a dozen companies that do what we do: home equity agreements, home equity contracts, and about a billion dollars a year. Um, we, we're forecasting that in 2021, this year, about a billion dollars will be invested. Um, through all of us into home equity agreements. Um, and, but what you say is important because there are a number of people who don't like the idea of sharing in some of the future or potential future increase of their property. Now, what is very important is we do not go on title as co-owners. So we're very much a silent partner. We don't own any of your property. What we have is a right to share in some of the appreciation. And again, what that means is if your property goes down in value significantly, we also get paid less and we also run the risk of possibly losing money. So because uh, of that, it's, it is much more of a partnership than it is um, you know, the sort of thing that you get from a loan. But your point is very important because the biggest objection we get or the biggest um, stumbling block we have is people... Um, conceptually uh, giving up something that they don't have in exchange for something that they can have today. And it is a psychological issue. But once people get over that, then it becomes very compelling because they can unlock equity from their home. So they're able to access equity that they own without monthly payments, without the burden of debt. And if you don't have debt and you don't have monthly payments, then, as Mark said earlier, you don't have that risk of foreclosure or of missing payments or of credit score impact. So the important thing to remember is this is a very different financing structure compared to a loan. And okay. because of that, it, it comes with different criteria. And those are the things that people have to get their head around. Okay. So, so as an investor, let, sorry, Mark, but like, let's just say I was going to do this as an investor, right? Like I'm going to, Mark's going to go and Mark's going to like unlock this. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to invest some of my money so that I have some ownership percentage, future percentage of Mark's house sale, which happens at some point in the future. Now I, I go and let, let's just say, I, let's just throw out a number out there. I put in a hundred thousand dollars. Mark takes that hundred thousand dollars. He's, he's happy. Go lucky, man. Mark's happy. He, he buys all these new toys that he wants to have. And over the next 30 years, he does nothing to his house. In fact, it gets condemned by the city. What happens to my investment? So you're talking about an edge case. Now, now obviously, what we want to do is protect the investor's investment. So one of the critical components of the agreement is if we're going to invest in your home, then you, um, as the recipient of the investment, have an obligation because we're partners now. So you must maintain your home. You may not allow your home to become condemned. Um, and you must, you must pay your taxes. You must pay your um you know, your, your mortgage on time. Otherwise, that is a breach. Now, if there is a breach, then we have certain rights because you've broken the agreement. So what you're talking about is very much an edge case. But in order to protect the investors from that, we're very um, cautious about homes that we work with and the amount of equity that they have. So after our investment, you will have a minimum of 20% equity yourself left. So we don't um, allow 
um, homes to be sort of leveraged um, or we don't allow you to sell all of your equity. So then there, there is immediately um, uh, or there is a maximum amount of equity that we will invest. In addition to that, depending on the program, uh, we may um, discount the value of your home at the beginning of the agreement. So that builds a further cushion in. So there are a number of things that we do for the investor to make the investment attractive. And remember, uh, there's a lot of money chasing these investments because they have a good return. They are asset backed and it does allow investors to buy into properties that are not for sale. Those properties are maintained, owned uh, and uh, managed by the owners. Uh, on the other side, it has to be attractive to the homeowner. So we have a number of different programs, different durations, 10 year programs, 30 year programs. So uh, it is a balance between what's attractive to the investor and what is good for the homeowner and as underwriters, we have to make sure as far as possible that we're picking homes where in places or uh, with, with homeowners where we think there's a, a likelihood that that asset will perform. Yeah, the, the way I think about it, Matthew, and tell me if I'm thinking about it wrong, it's if I had a company and let's say my company was worth a million dollars and that equity is locked up. So I go to a private equity group and they say, Mark, here's, you know, $500,000. We're going to recapitalize your company. And, but we're going to also participate in the growth of your company. We're going to do all these things to help grow the company. And then in five years, when you do want to sell, so you get two bites of the apple, you get money now, and then you get money again. And we all participate in the appreciation. The difference in a company is it's active. We're a house in a housing market, let's say where I live. I mean, right now it's nuts, but let's just say the typical housing market that might appreciate 4% a year. Well, in an interest rate arbitrage environment, if I can take out money that's locked up in my house and then make a, bigger, a higher percentage than 4%. Yeah. Am I thinking that's, about this I, correctly? You are exactly because it's, it's, this is what equity is. Shares in a company is equity ownership in the company. And again, it's the, same, it's the same process. If you want to access the equity in your company, you either sell shares or you borrow against the shares in your company. Um, it's an illiquid asset. Unless your company is um, on a stock market somewhere, the only way you can sell shares, um, it, you know, it's, it's, the only way you can access capital is, is to do that. So your analogy is, is, is perfect. And what you're doing is you are, or rather what we're doing is we're enabling you to create liquidity for what is essentially a single concentrated, non-financial, non-cash flowing asset. And we're doing that, we're not buying it from you, we are participating with you as partners. So one important thing that you said is when you sell your company or when you sell your home, you also get to share in the appreciation. We don't take all of the appreciation, we take some of it. So you, as the homeowner, take the rest. So you also get to participate. But most importantly, you have capital available today that is not loan capital, it's equity capital. And that means there are no monthly payments attached to it. So you are then free to invest that in whatever you want. And the net result, uh, if you're successful at investing it, is that you will make more money from that capital than it will cost you. In addition to that, you have control over it, and you have the ability to, it's, it's more liquid. So you can do with it as you wish because it's not locked up in your home. Yeah, so Scott, see that solves a problem for people listening to this that want to do a land deal and don't want to do a, a, a home equity line of credit. They don't want to do debt because of, let's say maybe cash flow or maybe a larger deal. This solves that problem because if we're averaging 300 to 1,000% on our money, well, why Absolutely. would we have our money exactly. sitting, growing at maybe 4 or 5% a year, illiquid in our home? But where it gets really interesting, Matthew, mm. is the blockchain component of this. Yes. Explain to Scott Todd where the blockchain component comes in. Well, I, it, this really comes back to your initial question, Scott, which is what's in it for the investors. One of the biggest problems for the investor is the liquidity of the instrument. So... Um, and let's use a 10-year agreement as an example. Um, so as an investor, if I invest in your home 
um, through a home equity agreement, I may have to wait 10 years before you sell your home. If it's a longer term agreement, I might have to wait up to 30 years. So some investors are quite happy with that. They have capital allocations that are designed for long term capital appreciation where they don't need that money back. Most investors, particularly smaller investors or retail investors, need that liquidity. So we have created a marketplace that enables us to fractionalize and trade home equity agreements. We use blockchain technologies to enable us to do that because the blockchain as a distributed ledger technology is ideally suited to chopping up these home equity agreements into little places into little pieces and keeping track of who owns those little pieces as they move from owner to owner. So what that means is on one side of our platform, if you're a homeowner, you can unlock equity. On the other side of our platform, if you're an investor, you can buy into these home equity agreements, which means that you can pick and choose homes that you like in Newport Beach or in San Francisco or in you know, in Phoenix, Arizona, for example. Um, and you can say, okay, I've always wanted to own some property in Phoenix or in, in California. So I'm going to put $500 into this property and 500 into that. And what we're enabling you to do is buy into the economic um, benefit that those home equity agreements give the investor. And um, our platform has been designed so that um, you can sell your interest once you've purchased it. So once you've bought it and held on to it, if you see the price going up in the market, then you can find another willing buyer in our marketplace and you can sell your investment. Now, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done from a technology perspective and from a regulatory perspective on our side, but we're a few months away from um, launching that um, in anger as it were. Wait, Matthew, Matthew, I think we lost your audio for a second there. Yeah, Scott, could you hear it then? No, he faded out on me. Okay. I don't know, Mark. Oh, yeah, uh, you're, you're, you kind of faded out, Matthew, but let's get your audio back. But let, um, Scott's got some, some, some thoughts. Yes. Uh, okay, okay, you're so back. Scott, okay. he, can, he can keep going, Mark. I was just going to fill in the gap. Yes. Oh, okay. So wait, but I just want to get your, your thoughts, Scott Todd, at this point. Uh, okay. I mean, Again, may, maybe I'm just a, a Neanderthal here, but I don't like it. I don't like it from the on, on my own house. I wouldn't like that. May, maybe I'm just old school. I don't know. I don't think my. But again, let, let's put this into perspective. He, okay, there are. Um, and again, is, is my audio back? That's the first. Your, yeah, your audio is back. Yes, uh, um, there's eighteen trillion dollars of equity in residential homes in the United States. There are over probably over 17 million homes where the owners have 50% or more equity. It's entirely logical, appropriate, and um, absolutely fine that this does not work for you, Scott, because right. you're probably in a position where you are able to borrow money. Um, but put yourself in a position where you're a retiree, for example, where you don't have income, yet you've paid off your mortgage because that was the right thing to do. You're sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars of wealth, yet you are unable to access it because you can't borrow money. So you need to sell your home. Or right. conversely, you could be in a position where you've built up equity. Something has happened, maybe a, a, a health issue or something has come out of left field that has impacted your credit um, that has put you in a position where you can't borrow, or you may simply not want to borrow money. So again, right. this is not um, something that is a solution for all people, yet it does provide a real benefit to a very large number of people who either cannot borrow money, don't want to borrow money, or see their home simply as a real estate investment, and they want to diversify. So my final point is, Think of it as a diversification strategy where your home is an asset which has a lot of your capital invested. This is a way for you to diversify. There's a cost of capital involved, sure. But if you can make significantly more, then it, then it makes logical sense to do this, even though emotionally you may be quite attached to, this, um, to, you know, to the equity in your home. Right. 
Look, I'm not, I, I don't disagree with you. Okay. Like I don't disagree. I, I just, I just think, okay, like in my situation, I'm going to have to sit down. I would have to sit yes. down and explain it to, to my wife. Right. And my wife's going to be a lot like I am right now. Like, I don't know about this whole thing. It's new. Okay. Like that's a, that's a hard sell. Even if I was a hundred percent on board with it, I'm like, which I, I like, I, me, yes. per, I'm just being honest. Like me personally, you're That's right. I, I'm probably not the the model for it. But but, but here's here's the other thing too. And this is this is what's like I am interested, interested in the investor side of it too. Very interested in that piece. But what you said does scare me. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It scares me. And what scares me is is that I've seen firsthand the retirees that need to unlock their their income. The people that can't go get the loan. I, honestly, when that happens, and maybe I'm just being idiotic here but like those are the people that can't afford to maintain the house and then you're pulling out all of the equity or maybe not all of it you're pulling out the equity and then like you said they're they're not able to go get a loan so if that house needs a new roof roofs in florida are like thirty thousand dollars so man does my roof now on a home that i'm now an uh, an equity owner in as an investor does that roof need to be replaced? It causes more damage and then the house becomes dilapidated. And, you know, you can tell the homeowner, yes. hey, you got to maintain it. But if they don't have the money, what are they going to do? You, you're right. And again, th these are all risks that we take as right. real estate investors. Right. However, um, the people that we come across, um, when we do an appraisal, so the first thing is when we, before we bring on a, um, a property, we'll send someone out and we'll, we'll have a full appraisal. At that point, you can normally pick up if the property is likely to be invested. And we come across all sorts of properties in all states of repair or disrepair. By the time we come in, if someone was going to have a problem with the roof, it would normally have happened quite a while beforehand. So we can... Uh, in pretty much every case, because of the experience of the appraisers, we can pick up when there's likely to be a problem. And we see all sorts of things. We see people that hoard um, you know, stuff in their homes. Their homes are stuffed, floor to ceiling with cardboard boxes. So we'll decline that one. We'll see properties where um, you know, owners have started to try and repair stuff themselves. You know, so from an investment perspective, it is a risk, but we mitigate that risk by using um, appraisers by looking at the property by by thinking do we really want to do this because we don't have to do it if we don't want to so we are right. quite picky about the properties and again remember there's always that equity cushion so the land value itself in many cases um is you know is is um is significant but but also most people tend to stay in their homes for seven years or less so in other words um the, the risk is there, but we try and mitigate it. So it's not a major risk. In other words, it, it's, you know, it, there's going to be a few edge cases, um, but overall, you, you know, we're, we're pretty confident. Okay. Now, can I, can I do this with, does that have to be my primary residence if I'm the homeowner or can I do it with a rental property that I own? The, the great thing about our programs is you don't have to be the homeowner. You don't have to live there. So if you have, and we work with a number of uh, people that have small portfolios that they've had for a number of years where they build the equity up, but they can't access it. They can't borrow money because they're up to their um, debt to income limits. We can work with you if you're a lander, if you're a property owner, if the property is rented, as long as the equity is there. So if, if I own, let's say I owned a condo that I own like free and clear, that could be, yes. that could be something Absolutely. that I can put equity on now. Yeah, subject um, uh, we don't obviously um, have to take special attention to the roof in your case, just to make sure that you are right. maintaining it. Yes. But no, in, in all seriousness, yes, it's subject to underwriting. So we just need to make sure that it's in an area where we can operate, where we provide um, um, investments. We need to make sure that it's a, uh, it's a four unit or less. So we only go up to four unit um, uh, you know, apartments. Um, so there's a number of you know, criteria, but yes, you know, the answer is normally... Um, yes, we okay. can, as long as it's a small, small building. But that would be an ideal situation where, you know, you, you can unlock capital and then put it to work. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We found we we found something there. So Do you know it's funny? The, one more so much. Most of our conversations um, start. Why would I do this? Most yeah. of them end. Why wouldn't I do this? And it, it is when you see that it's the logic because 
it's it's um, we're we're just using something that is used every day in the commercial world. Um, so so I just thought I'd casually throw that in there. So, so Matthew, I'm thinking about my market, Scott's market, just different markets. So being in Phoenix, and the fact that our market tends to swing really high and then really low, I would be more apt to not want to give up equity. That being said, if I lived in Iowa and I could participate in the appreciation of a Phoenix or Tampa Bay or a Maui or uh, LA, that sounds very that, that's exactly to me. That, that is precisely the um, uh, the sort of mission or the underlying design of our platform. It's to enable people to buy into properties that are not for sale in areas that um, see high growth. Because you're not a property owner when you're buying into one of our agreements as a fractional owner. You don't own the property. You get. Um, the economic returns of the increase, but you don't have that same uh, cost associated with um, owning a property, maintaining a property, renting it out, collecting the rent, and all the issues associated with you know the toilets, tenants, and trash. Or you know we, we know that so well. Um, so so it does allow you to benefit from real estate um, uh, increasing real estate prices without the the cost and the um, you know implications of being an owner. Um, we don't offer these agreements to all states. So we're only working with states um, where there is likely to be significant house price appreciation. So the, you know, the, there are a number of states where we're not ever going to see that. So we won't invest there or we don't invest there. So again, that's what separates it from a, from a loan. Okay. So how much equity would I have to give up? Well, again, we, it depends on the program. So um, there are two types of agreements. Um, one is a 10-year agreement and the other is a 30-year agreement. They work in slightly different ways, but the methodology is the same. I'll give you an example of a 10-year agreement. Now, a 10-year agreement is really, very simply, um, a discounted trade. So for every 10% of the value of your property that we invest when you sell your property, you give us 16% of the value of your property at that time. So let's take a, um, a I don't know, a $500,000 house. If we invested 10% of the value of your home, which is $50,000, when you sell your home, you would give us 16%, which is $80,000. You've got 10 years to use that $50,000 before that contract um, you know, becomes payable effectively. In the early years, in the years one, two, and three, if you sell your home, we cap the maximum return that we can make at around 18%. So that means that if you were to sell your home in years one or years two, we wouldn't charge you the full, you know, 1.6 sort of multiple. We would charge you a lot less than that. So there is no prepayment or early payment penalty. In fact, it's the opposite. So we um, provide you with a, a discount if you settle the agreement early. So from our perspective, what that means, or from the investor's perspective, it means that they are investing in your property. They have effectively an in the money option, which means that they have protection against the value of your property going down, because it would have to go down quite a lot for them to actually start losing money. From you as a homeowner, you get cash today and, and you know exactly how much you need to pay. The only thing that we don't know is what the value of your home is going to be in one, two, three, five, ten 10 years time. As you say in Phoenix, it could be a lot more, it could be a lot less. So that's the risk that we take on both sides. Scott Todd, I see the, I see the wheels turning. I don't know, yeah, man. So like, I, like, okay, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I see it from an investor standpoint. I see it, you know, from, I don't know, like, I, I mean, if it's a billion dollar business, wow. That's all I gotta say. Like, I'm shocked that people, people do this. 
Um, but again, I, I guess I'm not the I'm not the 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 target ideal customer, which is okay. Like, but I wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't mind investing because you know things are gonna go up in value. We know real estate's gonna go up in value in a t- ten year period. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. Okay. And I, I like the liquidity stand from an investor standpoint. Yes. I think Scott and I would be more on the investing side of it than yes. we would be on the um, the equity side of it, just because of our own personal yes. financial positions. But in the world of investments, let's just say on average we can make eight percent in yes. equities over a ten year period. Yes. Why would we invest? in residential real estate? Well, first of all, it's a very well understood asset class. There's lots of research. Um, It's a very simple instrument in the sense that what you're doing is you're buying into the potential house price appreciation. So it's something that people can get their heads around. Um, It's a very little cost involved in the agreement. So we don't have the layers of cost that you to traditionally find in REITs, where you have all of the management companies, you can pick and choose the investments that you go into. So you can buy into specific areas, into specific properties, um, and also, you know, subject to regulatory approval, etc. you will be able to trade out if you find a willing buyer. So from an investor's perspective, it gives you access to a previously untapped asset class. So you cannot today buy into the equity of someone's home if they own it and live there. If you, if it's a rental property, that's fine because you can probably buy some of the ownership of a fund or of that particular property. But if someone is an owner occupier, um, then you cannot buy into the equity of their home. You could buy a strip of some of their debt maybe, but not the equity. So this does unlock an exciting untapped asset class and it's very big it's an 18 trillion dollar asset class so not all of the homes in that 18 trillion dollars will qualify so obviously we need to narrow it down a bit but there's still plenty to go around and so that's why this is interesting and compelling because it's new it's untapped it's not a me too product it's something you couldn't do before and it's something where with the amount of research that's available um, you know, the average investor can get a pretty good handle on where they think they might like to invest, which could be, you know, in their street. It could be in their neighborhood. Scott Todd, it's pretty compelling. I, I, well, I really, okay, Mark, I really let's, like it. Let, let's, let's go, let's go to the, let's go to the geeky side here. Cause you know, I had to break out the financial calculator, right? So all right, so let's just run this scenario, this ten-year scenario. All right, so the house is worth uh, the house is worth half a million dollars. The um, we're gonna sell ten percent of our our equity yep. there, ten percent of the value. So we're gonna we're now we're going to invest fifty thousand dollars in this deal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For for ten years and ten years now, ten years yep. that's the limit. Like so, we have to plan for the ten-year mark. Let's assume for a minute that that half a million dollar house grows at 4% a year. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Okay. 4% a year. So 10 years from now, I'm just breaking out the calculator. Hold on yeah. I'm, for those of you that are wondering what I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to the good old financial calculator. I'm plugging in these numbers and uh, 4% is, is my yield there. Okay. So boom, we're going to do that. So Mark, my house, my half a million dollar house, 10 years from now, would be around $750,000, $745,000. That's growing at 4% a year, okay? Yeah. So, so now, as an investor, as an investor, I pop down 10%, I put in the $50,000 yeah. to buy that piece, yeah. and I get 16% of that future value. Yes. So correct. now instead of instead of my future value being fifty thousand dollars, my future value is sixteen percent of the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So when I take that sixteen percent in there, so my future value is about a hundred, just under one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So I turn fifty thousand to one hundred twenty thousand dollars over yes. the course of ten years. Wow, that's really good, right? That's really good. And then. Let me just take my $50,000 initial investment 
then plug that into the present value so I can calculate yep. it now to look at my annual yield. And my annual yield on this thing is 8.72%. And as we all know, yield, yield is relative, right? To some people that might be a great yield, other people with a terrible yield, the yield is, yield is all relative. But when, when I look at this and like, this is now I'm just Matthew, I'm just, again, I, I, I mean, I, I could see the, the value here, but when I look at this, like, I mean, there's funds that are, that are yielding, not even funds. There's like private equity I can do as an accredited investor making 20%. Sure. Like how, how, how is this, like, how is this going to grab the investor dollars? I guess when it's like let's, on let's, average let's, in that scenario, 8%. So let's, let's change. So in the same way that when you take out a 30 year mortgage, very few people run that mortgage for 30 years. So right. what we're seeing is with our programs, they have a, an average duration of three to four years before the home is sold or before the, the, um, our agreements are refinanced, typically by another mortgage. So if you change your numbers and say 10 years is the maximum, so um, the other important thing is it gives you downside protection. So if the house value does not go up, or if that house prices go down, you still have a, po a positive yield. That's one thing. But yeah. if you look at, let's say, four years, so I'm not sure if you have a moment just to um, change the duration from 10 to, say, four years, which is the yeah, sort of okay. duration that we're seeing, then okay. you'll see a very different picture. Okay, so let, let's let's look at this. Because I, I am interested, right? And this is what I do. Like, I compare yes. investments all the time. So if I take that same half million dollar house, still growing at 4% yep. a year for four years now, yes. okay? So my future value of that house is now $586,000. Yes, exactly. Right? Okay. And so as the investor, I'm going to get 16% of that. Yep. So 16% of 500. So now I'm, now I'm getting about $94,000. Uh, I'm getting 93.8. So let's run with that. So I'm going to get about 93.8 in four yep. years. So I'm going to turn my half million into, yes. um, into 93. You, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn my well, 50,000. My yes, 50,000. 50, sorry. I'm going to yeah. turn my 50,000 into about 94,000. Okay. And so then over a four year period, let me plug in my $50,000 in here. So then my yield on this is 15.8%. Yeah. Not bad, but. Again, you know, like, you know, as an investor, you're, you're looking, you're always looking at the yield. And again, I know that there's a lot of um, investments available to, you know, accredited investors. It's 20. Like, is that, does that like, well, like, impact yeah, you guys? I, and that's before yeah. your fees too. That's before your fees. Yeah. And again, the fees, the, 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 the fees are around sort of one to 2%. So they're, they're pretty okay. uh, minimal. Yeah. Um, again, it's all about diversification. So in other words, there are other investments in real estate that have, um, and it's a very complex equation. We're talking about risk reward. We're talking about right. um, you know risk balanced yield. So this is an in the money option where the homeowner is in occupation of their own home. It's a real estate investment. It is distributed across multiple single family and multifamily homes um, where the equity is very high compared to, um, and the cost of managing that is very low. So there are all sorts of um, benefits this type of investment compared to the other investments which give a higher yield where there is a much higher um, associated risk. So the risk to, to get your 20% yield in some of these other investments, um, and having been in that business for a number of years, I know that things don't always go according to plan. But with this type of investment, it is um, it is def it is much more defensive, yet it has the sort of um, uh, you know return profile of an investment that should have a much higher uh, risk profile. So it, you know it is a blend. It is part of a balanced portfolio. We're not suggesting that anyone you know put their last dime into this. But if you want, if you are a real estate investor, it's a very interesting asset class, um, and it does give you that. Um, you know, pretty attractive yield. And, and for most investors, I think a 15%, uh, you know, return, uh, uh, you know, would, wouldn't be too shabby, really, particularly as it's asset backed. Right. Okay. One, one last question I have of, I've monopolized this whole thing. No, no, no. <laughs> how do you, how do you, if you're not on the title with me or the deed with me, how do you secure the investment with the county so that 
when they go to refinance or sell, there's that record of this, this agreement on there. The agreement is recorded um, as well with a lien on title. So we do not take ownership of the property. We don't go on title as owners, but the agreement itself, it's itself is recorded um, as a performance deed of trust. So the language is very similar to a deed of trust. It just means that we can, uh, you know, the performance of the agreement, we go through the escrow process and we as the lien holders are paid um, are paid for. So the agreements are protected by a lien on title. Okay. All right. I, I think it's brilliant, Matthew, for a lot of different reasons. Thank you. And, you know, you talk about diversification. As an investor, I would like the opportunity because I can't go and buy, you know, million dollar homes in Hawaii. But now with a little bit of money, I can put, I can get fractional ownership in these homes and participate in what I think will be tremendous appreciation and get an attractive yield. On the other side of things, I know lots of people my age that love the fact that they paid off their home as fast as they could. They are so proud of the fact that they are debt free and now they are house rich and they don't. They want to do things, yes, but they don't want the debt. And now yes. you've, you've got a really novel solution Absolutely. to give yes. up some equity, but they don't have to get debt. They don't have to deal yes. with the bank. They don't have to deal with cash flow issues, all of that stuff. And then you've got on the liquidity side of the blockchain for the investor. I, I, I love it. I love it. I'm seeing this in a lot of different areas now. Masterworks, yes. you see this in the art world. So yes, it's the what's disruptive is these asset classes where it used to be only for the wealthy is now coming to, you know, um, the, the investors. Exactly, it's not. It is that, but also it's assets that previously could not be traded now can. So the concept of trading a fraction of a Van Gogh, Van Gogh, um, you know, could not happen until these technologies. And what that means is that when we're talking about equity in residential homes, um, the technology doesn't make it happen. It just makes it possible um, at a, a cost that is not prohibitive. So to build these types of systems, um, you know, wouldn't be possible in a traditional way. But using blockchain technologies, you get that, um, you know, the ability to, to build it and you have the ability to distribute it and, and have it trading in a, in, a, in a manner which actually makes it work. So it is a combination of regulatory, of market, of technology and demand. So all of those things, and we've been working on this for you know, three and a half years. Um, and, and I think today is the moment when all of those factors come together and make it compelling for both the homeowner and for the investor. Okay. Well, we are at that point in the podcast now, Matthew. Your mentorship has been so enlightening. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. And I really yes. appreciate you've been very good natured about Scott Todd grilling you. No, I appreciate it. It's, it's great to have these questions. I mean, we love these questions because you know anyone that's listening to this will have the same questions. And it's great to have them because now they have answers. Exactly. So I'm going to put you on the spot one more time and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Well, I'm a great fan of this chap called David Allen. Uh, and I picked up his book the other day. He wrote a book. I think it's called Getting Things Done or Getting Stuff Done, something like that. Um, and it is just uh, and for all of those, those of you who sort of lay awake at 4 a.m. on a Sunday night, thinking about all of the things that you've got to do in the following week. Um, it's a great book because it, it basically tells you to stop doing that. Um, and start writing stuff down and, and create um, processes so that you don't clog your brain up, um, you know, trying to turn it into some sort of large um, organic filing cabinet and allow it to do the things that it's designed to do, which is to be creative. So it, that book really just, you know, I was sort of really thinking, gosh, you're absolutely right. Why have I been so stupid all these years? And um, so I picked it up again because I was sort of moving stuff around in my office. Um, and so I would recommend it heartily to anyone who um, wants to figure out how to be more productive, but without the usual sort of mumbo jumbo, 
you know, psycho babble that you get with most of the other books. This is just very straightforward and digestible and uh, very common sense. Yeah, getting things done. Uh, David Allen is a classic. I actually have it right over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna dust it off and and revisit it. There you are. It is. It is. It's a it's the gift that keeps on giving. Fantastic, Scott Todd. Before we go to your tip of the week, I just want to remind the listeners that mm-hmm. today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building up passive income without any headaches and have Scott Todd be your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. He'll take you up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently. And that tuition is not going to cost you anything. Guaranteed, you'll make back that money 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Look, before we get to my tip of the week, I just want to know, like, which you have that book, right? But which bin is it in back there? <laughs> yes. Not not you, Matthew. Mark. No, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in, in my Star Wars bin? In my Star yeah. Wars bin? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who, who aren't, uh, who are just listening and not on the video, yes. my background is, star, is a, I'm in a Star Wars uh, chamber. Yeah, for those of you yeah, watching in black and white, yes. Looks, looks uh, I mean, I just can't, maybe have some of those bins back there. Yeah. And I might have been stalling for some time to get my tip of the week too, Mark. I wasn't. <laughs> hey, check this out, Mark. Uh, you know, people, there's there's some things that people always try to change. You know, they always try to change the toilet. You know, everybody, come, these inventors, they come up with new toilets all the time. They also want to change the addresses. What three words? And I check if you're into that stuff about changing the way that the address system works in America or the world, I should say. Here you go, Mark. This is right up your alley. Smartaddress.io. Have you seen this thing? No, I love this kind so of stuff, though. Basically, what happens is, I, I mean, I could kind of understand, uh, you know, what three words, if you will. But essentially, this is very similar to it. But at the same time, what's interesting is that they use more of a bigger block system than every little word. So you actually get, a, I guess, a real address or something that looks like a real address as opposed to, you know, these three words that nobody knows what to do with. So in this case, I just randomly clicked on a place and it's, you know, it tells me that the address is at 7558 Ivory Mill 2. And then the city and zip code or city address and zip code are listed there. So it's really more designed to bring a real address looking thing to the system. And again, you can map everywhere on earth this way. And you're going to ask me, well, why not use what three words? And my answer is, I don't know. It's like, let's just create a new toilet system too while we're at it. <laughs> so with that, this is my tip of the week, like it or not. There you go. I'm going to reserve judgment, but okay. My tip of the week is going to uh, possibly disrupt everything. Check out quantumre.com. Quant. Then the word, the letter M is in Mary, R E is in real estate.com. It's a phenomenal website. Even if you have no interest in this asset class, even if you have no interest in giving up any kind of equity in your home, the site in and it of itself is explains a, what is typically a very difficult concept, very, very simply, just for marketing purposes, you should go and check out quantumre.com. It is just a phenomenally laid out website and um, well done, Matthew Sullivan. Well thank done. you. Yeah, it's, very, it's very kind of you. So thank you very much indeed. It's very, uh, very much appreciated. All right. Well, are we good, Matthew? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> All right. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Matthew Sullivan is if you do us three favors, follow us, rate review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you, and I'm personally going to send you a signed copy of the book, Dirt Rich. And um, so please do it. It really helps. All right, Scott, let's do this. One, two, three, let Let freedom ring. ring. Matthew's like, hmm, not sure if I would. No, no, no. I wasn't. No.
I'm always it's, it's okay. a bit like when I do you know you know when you're when you're sort of singing hymns or something you're always like one word behind or something so yeah, yeah. you know so I'm using I'm sort of mouthing pretending that I knew what you were going to say there we can, no you can always overdub in the edits though couldn't you if you were exceptionally exactly. generous exactly all right well thanks everybody thanks for listening to the art of passive income podcast start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit